We begin with late breaking news. San Antonio fire crews are on the scene of a fire right now. It's happening in the 1700 block of South General McMullen and our Sarah Costa is live there right now. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Still a pretty active scene here. I didn't see flames and just till right now you can see it. Oh, maybe they put them out. There was a small flame coming out. So we're at a storage unit. This is on the city's west side, like you guys said, off of 90 and South General McMullen. Uh, there was about 16 units here. Didn't see a lot of flames, but as we were driving in off 90, we could see a lot of smoke coming from this area. It does look that they are kind of on the back end of putting out this fire at this time. Uh, see a lot of red lines. What those red lines are is the lines that are connected to their fire trucks. Usually they use those just to keep an eye on hot spots. So it looks like when we got here, they were just focusing on putting out those hot spots and definitely found some using those red lines there. But it looks like it doesn't, it's, this is a storage unit. So we haven't spoken to fire yet because there, it's still an active scene yet. So we're not sure if anyone was involved or hurt in this incident, but because it is a storage unit, um, this is not a place of residence. So we're assuming at this point that no one was actually inside, but of course we don't have that information confirmed until we do talk to uh, someone with either police or fire. But like I said, it looks like they're just kind of checking in for these hot spots. This is a storage unit off of, the, off of South General McMullen. It looks like it's just contained to this one building on the property. This is a gated property. And I count it maybe 10 to 20 storage units here that look to be damaged. We are still waiting to talk to firefighters to get that information confirmed, making sure no one was injured. But again, it looks like they are in the back end of putting out this fire. Live from the west side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark, Steph. Dude, this morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead after a vehicle plowed into him while he was walking on a sidewalk. Happened around 930 last night in the area of Highway 281 and Embassy Oaks, just north of San Antonio International Airport. Police say the driver of the vehicle drove off the road and barrel rolled across the sidewalk and rolled over the victim. The man on the sidewalk was taken to the hospital, but he later died. Police say the elderly driver was assessed by police and EMS and released to family. They say alcohol was not a factor. Sheriff officials tell us that there is a home that has been raided four times in one year. The most recent happened last night, and now, according to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, there are at least 10 people in custody. Bear County Sheriff's deputies and the SWAT team swarmed this home off of East Houston in North New Braunfels. They were executing a drug warrant. And because the home had already been raided three previous times this year, and since weapons were involved in the past, Sheriff Javier Salazar is hoping to either condemn the home or demolish it. We realize that this is most likely a nuisance property. Uh, that has been some of the comment that we've gotten from neighbors. My understanding is there was also a shooting recently nearby where a 14 year old uh, young boy was shot. I mean, that's that's just uh, we're just waiting for something bad to happen. Salazar tells us that they are still searching for surrounding areas for weapons. New body camera video is revealing more about a shooting incident between San Antonio police and an armed suspect. It shows what happened October 17th on Gus Garcia near Colima Street, just west of downtown. The driver and passenger got out of a car during a traffic stop and started running. The officers arrested the driver but continued chasing the passenger. And when he tried to jump a fence, police say they told him to stop, but it claimed he raised his gun at officers. That's when police say they opened fire. You can't see that on the tape because we froze the video. We believe viewers would find it too graphic. 19-year-old Richard Rodriguez was the passenger that was shot and killed. Investigators say he had a second gun. Bernie ISD has a lone finalist for superintendent, Dr. Kristen Kraft, who has been an educator for 28 years, would be the first female superintendent in school district history there. School board gave Kraft unanimous support. She is set to replace Dr. Thomas Price, who will retire at the end of the year. 507 now to the nation's capital where crowds calling for a ceasefire in the Israel Hamas war clashed with U.S. Capitol Police. Two sides came to blows outside of the Democratic National Committee headquarters last night on Capitol Hill. Now the melee comes as Israel's ground operation in Gaza presses on. ABC's Justin Finch with the latest from Washington. Chaos on Capitol Hill overnight. Free, 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 
U.S. Capitol Police and protesters demanding Israeli forces and Hamas militants cease fire in Gaza, brawling outside the Democratic National Committee headquarters late Wednesday. It was so immediate. As soon as we got out here, it seems like we weren't welcome. Demonstrators deny Capitol Police reports that the event was illegal and violent. Authorities say at least six officers were injured and at least one protester was arrested for assaulting an officer. Congressman Brad Sherman says he was among a number of congressional leaders forced to evacuate their Democratic headquarters. Neither side, neither the right nor the left, should uh, engage in criminal behavior attack police or even disrupt other people's meetings. Meantime, in Gaza, Israel now claiming control of the nine-building Al-Shifa medical complex. Israeli forces saying troops uncover proof Hamas was holed up there, pointing to what they say is Hamas weaponry found in an MRI room. There is a an AK-47. There are cartridges, am ammo. Uh, there are uh, grenades in here. Of course, uniform. ABC News could not independently verify those claims, and Israel has not yet provided evidence supporting its allegations that Hamas has tunnels under the hospital. An Al-Shifa doctor telling ABC's Matt Gutman 40 patients died after the ICU ran out of oxygen. So we started six days ago with six to three patients in the ICU. Now we have 20 patients only in that. Israel also releasing images it says shows its military delivering medical supplies. Sources tell ABC News the U.S. and Qatar are making headway on a ceasefire deal calling for Hamas to release at least 50 Israeli hostages in exchange for Israel releasing dozens of jailed Palestinians. But sources say the two sides differ on how long that ceasefire would last. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Senators voted last night on a bill to avoid a government shutdown at the end of the week. The bill will now head to President Biden's desk for his approval. It does not include extra aid for Israel or Ukraine. The continuing resolution will keep the government open through the holidays, giving lawmakers time to work through several contentious funding issues. The stopgap funding bill will run out January 19th for priorities, including military construction, transportation and veterans affairs. The deadline to finance other departments is February 2nd. Governor Greg Abbott appears poised to officially endorse former President Donald Trump. Two tourist sources say it is likely to happen when they visit the border city of McAllen on Sunday. Abbott and Trump are set to discuss the future of immigration. The former president says he wants to revive border restrictions from his last term in office. If Abbott does endorse Trump, it could snub fellow Southern Republican Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida.